party people. Uh, so I was looking back at the footage yesterday and I thought, oh my goodness, I've got to learn what a good angle for me is. Like, you know, how everybody in Hollywood's like, this is my good side. No, this is my good side. I don't know what, if I have a good side, but I do know that holding the phone down here is revealing my chins. And we're, we don't want to see that. No, stop. No, and I don't want to show you up my nose either. So... Anyway, so I'm going to try to figure out how to hold the camera in a uh, more appropriate angle. I appreciate you all being very patient with me. This is a learning process. We're getting there, so it's all good. Okay, so what is going on here at the Wheatshire is this evening my daughter and I are going to be heading out to our um, church young ladies Bible study group. And so the boys are staying at the house to, you know, do boy things. And I thought they need some good like cool man food. So what do I have that I can make them tonight? That's like manly bonding food. And I thought, oh, wild game is always good. So tonight I'm going to be making them some venison nachos, but the meat that I have is kind of gamey and I wanted to show you how I uh, take some of the gaminess out. So stick around and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, here is some ground deer meat. This is a pound and it's all of its beautiful um, bloodiness and um, I set this out this morning and it, yes it has been at room temperature and I know people say don't do that you need to put it in the refrigerator well if I had time to put it in the refrigerator and let it thaw slowly I would have but I didn't think about what I was gonna fix for dinner until this morning so whatever but anyway so it's been sitting on the counter since uh, about nine o'clock this morning uh, thawing out so here's what we're gonna do next okay I just want to let you guys know that this white sink, of course, was here when we moved here. And honestly, I would not put a white sink in my kitchen if I had the opportunity to build again. Um, it scratches easily. It stains easily. It's really a pain in the hiney. But I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. This is a gross job. I have my homemade all-purpose cleaner um, to disinfect as much as I can as I go. You want to make sure that your sleeves are pulled up, that you're wearing your apron so you don't get blood on your clothes, and this is how we're going to do it. Okay, I'm putting my hair up, and I'm grabbing my colander or strainer, and I'm going to run this on cold water. Hopefully, this won't do its weird vibrating thing that it does. Okay, so I am literally just gonna open this dear me. Oh, before I get this other hand yucky, I'm gonna grab a glass bowl that this is gonna go into in just a moment. Okay, so I am opening this beautiful deer burger. You're gonna see a lot of blood. And I'm going to go ahead and put this plate in my dishwasher that is waiting for me. Okay. Okay, now we're just going to rinse as much blood out as we can. That's where all the game is, gaminess is for some of you newbies to wild game eating. Um, okay, so you can see this is kind of like a lovely shade of burgundy and as more and more blood um, rinses out the meat's gonna turn kind of a grayish brown that's okay it is totally normal now if you are new to uh, wild game if you're eating wild ven or venison usually the butcher oh yeah you can really smell the gaminess <laughs> your butcher would will add um whoops hang on Okay, your butcher will add fat to the venison because venison is naturally very lean. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but it's really starting to change. Um, and don't worry, this, because of the fat, it's going to still kind of hold its form, I guess you could say. But the aim of the game is to get as much blood out as possible. So things that will help draw the gaminess out is um, salt, 
Um, and then some people will use buttermilk, some people will use vinegar. Um, and since I don't have buttermilk, I am going to be using salt and vinegar because I need to start cooking in about 30 minutes. I should have done this an hour ago, but vinegar and salt will kind of do the trick doubly quick. And um, you can see now it's starting to get like a pinkish color. Okay. Some of little tiny bits of the meat are coming out from the strainer. I guess if you wanted to, you could probably cover the bottom of your sink with cheesecloth. Um, I really don't think that's necessary though because you're really not losing that much. But we are losing a lot of the blood. The gaminess smell has already dissipated. And we have eaten from this deer already. And I have done the same exact method. It works wonderfully. You have just enough of the gaminess to know that you're eating deer. But really it's so mild that if I didn't tell you it was deer, you probably wouldn't know. Okay, so we've been rinsing now for almost four minutes. And look at there, we're getting kind of like that brownish grayish color I was telling you about. So I think that's good enough for now. Um, I'm gonna turn this water off. I'm gonna shake some of this water out. Do you see, it's still pretty kind of like ground, ground meat. So you're, you don't lose that by rinsing it. When a, a friend of mine actually gave me a bunch of this meat. And the reason why was because she said they couldn't eat it. It was too gamey. So I actually got online. I, I have um, soaked wild game before, like uh, deer roast or deer steak. And uh, can you see that? There's some remnants, but not too bad. Um, but I didn't know if you could do the ground because you know it's already kind of minced up. I'm gonna put this in the trash real quick. Um, but anyway, so I looked it up and sure enough, the method that I found worked. And so I wanna share it with you guys. Okay, so I'm going to stop tape for just a moment and I'm going to move this to a plate and then show you the soap that I make. rinsed pretty well. Can you see that mess back there? Don't look at it. Okay, got the meat rinsed pretty well. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to grab some sea salt. If I can find it. Here it is. I found it. Are you looking at that mess? Quit. Okay, now, so I have some all natural sea salt. You can use table salt. Whatever you got, use it. Okay, so cold water. Oh, you can't see this, can you? Okay, so now we're going to take this bowl of water. Whoa, for the record, I sanitized everything. And we're gonna fill it enough that we're gonna cover our meat. Okay, so that's pretty good. And if we need to put more in it, we will. Okay, so I don't know, that's probably about six cups of water or so. And now we're going to, I'm just gonna do, let's see what feels right here. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna do a palmful of salt. And, okay, and then I'm gonna put a splash of white distilled vinegar. Um, maybe like a tablespoon. You could probably use different vinegars, but I'm afraid if you did, you would uh, add more of a weird flavor to your meat. So don't do that if you can help it. If that's all you have, I don't know, maybe you could do it. I'm just gonna stir this around until the salt dissolves a little bit. Um, will this make your meat a little salty? Yeah, there'll be some salt in there, but you're gonna salt it anyway, right? Well, maybe not if you have high cholesterol or if you retain water really badly, but um, if, if that's the case, if you can't use salt, then 
I would just rinse it the best I could and that might be enough. Okay, so there goes that. That's gonna sit, let's see, it is 4.40 now. I need to start cooking. My husband's gonna be home at 5.30. Um, manly nachos, probably will only take about 20 minutes. So I'm gonna let this sit for 25. Ideally, I would let that, sorry, I'm covering that up. Ideally, I would let that sit for probably 30 minutes, at least. But I kind of feel like I rinsed it good enough that just this is gonna be fine. Okay, so when we come back, we're going to drain this off and we're going to start making manly nachos. Okay, I'm getting ready to drain this water off. I just wanted you to see how much more blood um, that salt and vinegar water has pulled from the meat. I'm going to go ahead and just rinse it in the strainer just like I did before, squeezing out as much water and blood as I can. And then I'm going to put it in a skillet and I'm going to show you how I make manly nachos. Hello again. I touched on this a little earlier, but as I said, deer meat is very lean. So if you're gonna be browning it in a skillet or frying it, you have to add fat. And since we are making manly nachos, I'm gonna use bacon grease. Actually, if I was making this for myself and a bunch of girls, I would still use bacon grease. Anyway, so let's get to it. Okay guys, my iron skillet has reached um, medium high heat and I've melted and heated a, about a tablespoon of bacon grease in there. I just crumbled up the venison in there. Um, as you can see, there's not very much blood in it at all. I'm washing my hands to prevent contamination and we are going to stir that around a little bit. You can see all the spices over there in the corner, and that's because I don't use taco seasoning. I kind of make my own. Hey, Mom, thanks for that uh, little iron skillet uh, handle pot holder. That thing comes in really handy. My mom got me that for Christmas one year. Okay, so first we're going to add about a half a teaspoon of table salt. a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of black pepper. My husband loves black pepper and I always said that if I gave him a bowl of black pepper he would still put black pepper on it. So we're going to get that incorporated very well and now I'm going to add a secret ingredient. This is a half a cup of shredded yellow squash that I froze this summer. Don't tell the guys. Okay, so we've got about a couple of tablespoons of dehydrated minced onion, about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, about a half a teaspoon of onion powder, and I end up putting in more later, so it's more like a teaspoon. Okay, about a half a teaspoon of chili powder, about a half a teaspoon of steak seasoning, And that's my son getting in my shot. <laughs> okay, stirring that around a little bit. Now we're going to add about a half a teaspoon of cumin. And I actually end up putting more at the end. So almost a teaspoon, but not quite. Cumin's pretty strong. Okay, we're just mixing that all around. Letting everything get good and incorporated. All right, now I cranked up the heat a little bit more. And now I am adding some homemade salsa, kind of give it some liquid and some flavor. We go through so much salsa during the year. I don't even know how much I've put up. Um, I think I have enough to last us for the rest of the year, but we shall see. <laughs> Okay, and I'm just adding a can of black beans that I rinsed and drained. And really, black beans help your meat go so much farther. Um, it's pretty much a staple in our house because you can use it by itself. Or, um, like I said, you can add it to meat and make it go farther. I've even heard of people use lentils to either use as a meat substitute or to make their meat um, kind of stretch. I have not tried it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Okay. 
that is some home canned jalapenos and I'm going to do about a tablespoon of the juice and you'll be surprised how far that goes. It actually gave it a really great flavor. I've never really done that before, but I thought, hmm, I think that would be good. And I was right, it was. Okay, my house is rocking because the washer's on spin cycle. But anyway, I, um, I've finished the meat. I'm gonna give it a taste to see if it needs any more seasoning. You can still taste deer, but it's not over the top gaming. It's pretty good. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more cumin, maybe a little bit more onion powder. Um, but yeah. Um, the shredded squash just kind of dissipates into it. You can't, it doesn't stand out, but it's still in there. So I know my boys are going to get at least some kind of vegetable tonight. Um, that little splash of jalapeno goes a long way. It's really good. It kind of amps the Mexican flavor, I guess. Um, and with, who doesn't love black beans? Don't answer that. If you don't like black beans, I love them. And it's a really great way to make your meat go farther. So yeah, I'm just going to add a little bit more cumin, a little bit more onion powder, and these boys are ready to go. Okay, here's the final product. This is what I just made for myself, um, but I just topped it with some salsa, homemade salsa, some ranch dressing, and some home canned jalapenos, and it's really, really good. Hope you all uh, enjoyed this okay. recipe, and we'll be talking to you later. Is this a good angle? Maybe this side.